welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast today. Thank you so much for joining us. This is our Tuesday edition, and if you listen regularly at all, you know that we have a unique name for each of our Tuesday broadcast. We call our Tuesday broadcast our Tract and Truth Tuesdays. Tract and Truth. Remember the word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. Truth is the word of God, the gospel truth. Well, friend, we want to talk on our Tuesday broadcast more blatantly about gospel tracts and the truth of the gospel. And I have both of those in the in my, my gospel sites, so to speak, as we come to deal with the broadcast today. Now, let me begin this way. I want to ask you about your church. May I do that? Here's my question. Are all the people in your church alike? Are they all alike? Now, by that I mean, are they all from the same sort of background? Many churches that I'm in, many churches, frankly, that I've been a part of, are made up of people who all have almost identical backgrounds. Our gospel churches in the United States are frequently made up of very white-skinned people and people that at least have a high school education. Most come from homes that, well, have some sort of Christianized impact has been there in those homes. It's really fun to be part of a local church when God rattles the cage of that church by seeing somebody come to Christ who does not fit that mold. They may have a a different skin color. They may have a different language that they speak. They may not be able to read or write. They may come from a, a history of generations of immoral living. They may come from a job where they made their money breaking the law. And all of a sudden, this nice and neat little local church has to figure out what kind of church they're going to be. Will they be one that pleases them and makes that life easy for them? Or are they going to be one that pleases Christ? Now, when the Apostle Paul came to Christ, he rattled the cage of the local churches that existed then. But aren't you glad they welcomed him? Oh, it was it was hard, but they took him in, and we are the beneficiaries of his spiritual growth and his call to be an apostle. Aren't you glad God moved the church to accept the Apostle Paul? If he did, if the church is accepted him then, maybe he'll help us to uh, accept some people today and rattle our cages. And who knows, the next Spurgeon may be found in your church from somebody very different than you. Well, that's where I'm headed today. Get your Bible open if you could. I want to read some verses out of Galatians chapter 1 and ask the question about who can and cannot be saved with our gospel message. Right now, though, in my hand is our premier gospel track, the gospel track that really started the ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Bible Track Echoes, this radio ministry, is the radio arm of the ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. And remember, we're not talking about music tracks. We're talking about a written presentation of the gospel. A gospel track is a written, clearly written, presentation of how to know Christ is Savior. It's in a format that is easy to be carried in your shirt pocket, in your purse. I keep them in my wallet as well. And we have them handy and ready to give to people who do not know Christ and people to whom we do not have the opportunity to, to audibly tell the gospel. The gospel track in my hand right now is entitled The New Birth. The New Birth. There is a phrase that people have become confused about. Often we call it the being born again. So many people, including people that go to churches where the gospel is preached, are confused. This gospel track 
we see more people coming to Christ through it than any other single track, probably any other three or four tracks put together. More people come to Christ through this one than those situations. And the reason being is that this track takes all the loose ends that people's thinking about what is salvation, what am I being saved from, who is Christ, and so on. It takes all the loose ends and clearly ties them up, and it does it in such a way that somebody says, I know what Christ did. I know why I need to be saved. I know what it means to be born physically, and now I know I need to be born spiritually. Many, many churches use this track, the new birth, in their new believers class. They use it also in classes where they're having a people that are getting ready to join the church. They want them to understand what their local church is about. And the local churches is based upon people being born, again, a regenerate church membership. And they will use this track to clarify this is the kind of person that we need to be joining our church, the new birth. Friend, you ought to read this track. It'll help you personally. It'll help you communicate the gospel as well as give you a powerful tool to hand out. At the end of my broadcast, my announcer is going to come on. He's going to be giving you some ways by which you can communicate with us. And if you'll give me your name and your mailing address, I will send you free of charge a complete sample pack out of all of our English gospel tracks. You be ready, have a piece of paper, have a pen ready, jot down our phone number, mailing address, website, something, please, and let us be able to send you that sample packet, and we'll be partners together in giving the gospel to lost people. What a great task. God allows us to be involved in telling the gospel to lost people. (laughs) That's great. Let's be partners. You be ready for that, won't you please? Well, let me read some verses. Galatians chapter 1. Beginning at verse 13, here Paul describes himself and his past, his before salvation life. Verse 13, for ye have heard of my conversation, my life pattern in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited it in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceeding zealous of the traditions of my father, but... When it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I may preach him among the heathen. We'll stop reading right there. I have one overriding question for this broadcast today, and is this, who can and who cannot be saved? Who can and who cannot be saved? Now, theologically, we're going to all get that question right. But practically, in a practical living sense, we flunk the test often. Theologically, we know that there's no sinner beyond the grace of God. There's no one that can't be saved, but throughout church history, God God has gone out of his way to save uh, sinners. He has saved serial murders, drug dealers, child molesters, thieves, uh, prison guards that were involved in the Holocaust, government officials caught breaking the law and going to prison. He saved prostitutes. He saved those people that have been captured in the homosexual lifestyle. And you and I could, well, we could stop and add uh, other scoundrels to the list that I have just begun here. Many of us, though, are slow to offer the gospel to the worst sinners in our communities. The church planting is a couple that's long since gone to glory, and I've told this story before, but I just love this couple. They were involved in church planting in the United States. God called them to smaller churches, and they would go to where there was no gospel preaching church, and they would start a church. But they would begin to ask God and find out who the town drunk was, and they would begin to ask God if the first person to see come to Christ would not be the town drunk. And they knew that if the town drunk got gloriously saved, saved and his life was transformed by the gospel, the whole town would sit up, take notice, and the town would know God has come to their town. And they started five churches and in four of them, sure enough, the first person that came to Christ was the town drunk. When he got saved and he was a person in the face that greeted the visitors coming in, people knew something about the gospel message was having an impact. It could change lives. Look at what it did to the town drunk. This godly couple knew that there was no person, no scoundrelous sinner beyond the grace of God. 
Here in the state of Illinois, where I live, we have a reputation as a state for sending a number of our, our state officials to prison. Yet, one godly couple I know was got a burden for one of our politicians who serves our state in, in Washington, D.C. They shared with him the gospel over and over and over again, and he came to Christ. He attends a straight arrow gospel-preaching local church. He's a good man of God. Galatians 1 here, the verses that I read, Paul well, well I, the, the verses that I read describe his life when he was still called Saul. He was a terrible sinner. And yet what did God do? Saved his soul. The verse 13 says that Paul persecuted the church. That word means he aggressively attacked it. He pursued Christians far from his, his own personal city. It says here in verse 13 that Paul wasted the church. That word means that he was laying it waste. He was destroying it. And by destroying, I don't mean church buildings. Churches then didn't have church buildings. Paul was killing people, men, women, and children. Over in Acts chapter 9, the word translated by here, wasted, is translated over there by the word havoc, where it says that Paul made havoc of the church. My friend, this was not a nice guy. But listen, God gave him the gospel. He, I know, got the gospel when Stephen was uh, under interviewed by the, uh, the courtroom of the Jewish leaders. He w- heard the gospel, and he watched Stephen being stoned. And God pierced the heart of Saul, this scoundrel, this murderer, this hard-hearted man, and God saved his soul. All right. We go through this to ask the question again. And the question is, who can and who cannot be saved? Dear friend, who is, the, who is the worst sinner you know in your town? They may live right next door to your church, and your church irritates them. Perhaps your church is doing something that causes irritation. Now, don't do that. But if it's just simply that he doesn't like the gospel, he doesn't like the church, and so on, then, man, I would begin to make him a prayer target and say, God, save the guy next door to church. If the worst scoundrel you know is somebody you work with, a man or a lady, dear friend, let's just make them a target of prayer and also give them the gospel. It's not enough for us to pray for sinners. We must do that, but we must give them the gospel. May I say, we not only must give them the gospel, we also must pray. Those two things go together to see lost people come to Christ. Oh, friend, who is the worst sinner in your town? Well, why don't you begin to make them a prayer target and a gospel target and go out of your way to give them a track, to befriend them, talk to them, and say, may I tell you about the greatest person I've ever met and introduce them to Jesus Christ and the gospel of Christ? Well, they may not like it at first, but don't be afraid of them. They're not beyond the grace of God. Dear friend, if you're listening today without Christ, you have not sinned so badly that God will not save you, forgive you of all your sin, and save your soul. You, friend, need to receive him. Do it now. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. Again, our phone number is 309 828 6888, and our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.